Hello everyone, welcome to my video. My name is Daniel. Here I will show you how to install new DB instances to be later used for the Veeam backup and replication server and also the Veeam one server. Plus later on after the DB instances is ready, we will show you how to install the Veeam Backup and Replication v10 and also the Veeam 1 version 10 installation as well and below are the virtual machine prepared for today's lab bear with you all this virtual machine is running Microsoft Windows Server 2016 standard with the below IP addresses and later on, each of the virtual machine desktop will show its IP addresses plus the things that need to be done. So you will see here for the Microsoft SQL 2016 server, I'm utilizing these particular IP addresses, which later the Veeam Backup and Replication server and the Veeam One server will require to connect via these IP addresses plus the DB instances name to be used later on. So let's look into the first task, deploying the new DB instance in a prepared virtual machine. So currently I'm connected to the Microsoft SQL server with these particular IP addresses. Now this virtual machine already pre-installed with the Microsoft SQL 2016 and you will see that I'm able to check using the configuration manager and you're able to see with the SQL services is now serving the default SQL instances now please be careful on this particular configuration if you would like to connect via remotely you cannot connect to the default deploy ms sql server instances thereby we will need to create at least one remote new sql instances for the veeam backup server use so in our task today, we will basically deploy two new instances to prepare for the Veeam environment use. So to do that, first you need to have the Microsoft SQL Server standard installation ISO. Now the configuration task running over here is quite similar to the new Windows SQL Server 2019-2. So let's go into the ISO file which already mounted to this particular virtual machine. Double click to the setup. Okay, so this is the actual installation center for SQL Server. And to deploy a new DB instances, we will need to go to installation and choose the first option. Now this is a standalone SQL Server installation. And in order to deploy a new instances, it is similar like doing a fresh installation in the server itself so now i will choose the first one new sql server standalone installation or add feature to the existing installation and now the setup actually started so you can now do an update if you want to all together in one process. So for now, I will skip it. Next, they will actually check your current installation whether it is ready. Do we continue? 
Okay, so after they do all the pre-check over here, and we will basically choose the first option. Whereby over here you will see perform a new installation of the SQL Server. Select this option if you want to install a new instance of SQL Server that what we are required to do at least for Veeam Backup and Replication Server and Veeam One Server to work. So I will choose the first option. Next, they will detect the current use product key. Just next. License terms, accept. Next. And for feature selection, choose at least database engine services. So this will basically tell the setup I would like to deploy a new database instance running background. Next. Okay, so under this screen, we will need to name our DB instances. So I will just put in the name predefined over here as you can see. First, we will create one instance for Veeam Backup. Now, please bear in mind, if you are using Veeam Backup and Replication Server only, you require to deploy only one instance if you also purchase and plan to use vim1 server in your environment they are basically considered two different db instance which capture different data so for the first i will create for vim backup replication server use next So I will just leave this as default. Please remember at least for the database engine that is hosting this particular DB instances is started as automatic as a service in this particular SQL server. If you forgot to choose it, you can always change it in the Microsoft services page. Next. We will need to define the authentication mode for these particular Veeam backup instances. So for my case, I will be using mix mode, which is the local SQL DB default system administrator called the SA account, which is pretty common. And you need to define a password for this SA account to log in locally or remotely and another account that you can define over here is based on your windows authentication with add current user they will basically add in whatever local admin account that you already created and log in to do this installation you can also define with an app button to add in any domain based administrator account so for my case i will just use the local admin account plus the sa account and later on i will utilize the sa account to connect to this particular db instances next thing you can check on the data directory now you can host this db instance in another drive letter which is predefined in your environment for my case, I will just use the default C drive, which is more than enough for me. And click next to continue. And these are the summary showing what we already defined earlier as a confirmation. And when you check all the information is correct, we can now click on install to start the DB instance for Beam Backup.
So after a while, the installation for Vim backup instances is already done. So we just proceed to close this particular setup. Next, I will do another new installation for Vim1 DB instances. So similar things, need to open up the SQL Server Installation Center and proceed to click the new SQL Server standalone installation. The process is quite similar to the Vim Backup Instance Deployment. So I will perform a new installation again. Next, product key. Next, accept the license terms. Next, under the feature selection, we will check the same thing, database engine services. In instance, I will just put in predefined Vim one has the instant name next need to make sure the SQL server database engine is started automatically as a service next we will need to define the authentication mode again for vim1 db instance Similar things, I will utilize mix mode with SA account access as a base and I will also add in the current user as the administrator. Like I already mentioned earlier, you can also add in any domain based administrator account if this SQL server is joined to your production domain. Next thing, you can also change your instance data directory to a different drive letter that is designed in your environment. So in my case, I will just keep the default C drive program files. Next, again check on the summary if it is correct and we will proceed to install the Vim1 instances. The Vim1 DB instance installation has been done also. We will just proceed to close the installer setup file. To check whether it is already up and running, you can go to start and look for the SQL Server 2016 Configuration Manager. And now you will see in my SQL Server, I am not running only the MS SQL Server default instance. Now it comes with Vim Backup DB instance and another one we call Vim 1 DB instance running. So with these two DB instance installed and up and running in the server, Later on, when we do the Vim backup and replication and Vim1 server installation, we just need to point to this IP address with the correct DB instance name and also the authentication user account. We are able to utilize this remote SQL server for the backup and replication server plus the Vim1 server. So on the SQL server, just need to make sure it is allowing remote connection to himself or the firewall is allowing the correct port to the SQL server. Thanks for watching this SQL installation, mainly to prepare for Vim backup and replication plus Vim1 server environment.